Yeah. Hey, uh, Dr. Luke, Luke, Mara, and Mani received his uh, master's and PhD in chemistry from the University of Madras in Chennai. India in 2001 and 2007, where he worked on microporous and mesoporous supported hydrotreating catalysts. He joined our group in 2007, and he's been working feverishly as a postdoc ever since. His uh, presentation is entitled, Low Temperature Water Gas Ship Reactions Over Alkali Promoted Cobalt Carbide Catalysts. Thanks, Gary. <coughs> Good evening to all of you. Uh, I think uh, Professor Dyer took me all the time, so so I just uh, before going to the presentation, I must say thanks to uh, the organizer uh, Gary and Cushing uh, for giving the opportunity to present my work here, and uh, I would like to congratulate Bart uh, for the award. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the alkali metal promoted cobalt carbon catalyst for low temperature water gas ship. Uh, I just briefly uh, go for the water gas ship and the uh, importance of uh, the water gas ship reactions in the petroleum uh, industry and uh, the catalyst that has been used to, for the <coughs> water gas ship. And uh, we are going to see the transition metal carbides and their significance in the water gas ship, especially the molecular carbide. And uh, of course, my talk is on uh, cobalt carbide for the water gas ship. And, uh, the promotional effect on the alkali group on metals like uh, lithium, sodium, potassium, and rubidium, cesium, more. and we're going to see the effect on the potassium loading as well. And finally, we can make some conclusions based on the study. Uh, as we all know, that the water gas ship is a conversion of the same gas uh, water and making uh, hydrogen uh, uh, for producing the hydrogen so that hydrogen can be utilized for uh, the ammonia synthesis. Uh, it has been well known in the industry for making the ammonia synthesis. Uh, and recently, the fuel cell process for making fuel cell process and also this water gas ship has been very important on this aspect. So the <coughs> industry, there are two different uh, uh, catalysts being used to the high temperature ship and the low temperature ship. Uh, in the high temperature ship, the iron and the chromium based catalysts are being used. And percent of 80 to 90 percent of iron and chromium, 8 to 9, 10 percent with the stabilizers like the copper, uh, aluminum, and the other alkalis. The typical condition uh, for the high temperature ship like the 320 to 450 degrees temperature and 10 to 60 bars. And then in the case of steam, we found at high temperature, the CO inlet will be at uh, 12 to 40 percent on a high basis. And the CO exit, uh, I mean, the CO comes out from the high temperature shift reactor will be like 3 to 5 percent. And uh, <coughs> the product mixture that goes to the low temperature shift uh, is like a 3 to 5 percent on the uh, CO concentration basis. And the typical catalyst that is used for low temperature shift is a copper zinc uh, uh, aluminum based catalyst. And uh, <coughs> you have stabilizers like a silica, chromia, and uh, manganese being also being tried. Uh, uh, finally, what uh, the CO comes out from the low temperature shift is as well as 0.3% on a basis. So, <coughs> the, what the, actually the present catalyst, uh, the iron, the disadvantage or the limitations of the present water, uh, low temperature water gas shift catalyst is. Uh, the low volumetric activity means you need a large catalyst bed in order to uh, reach the equilibrium with zero conversion. And uh, the second thing is like uh, the catalyst centering, particularly if you operate on a catalyst at high temperature. And the irreversible deactivation when you're exposed to uh, liquid water, like when you're shutting down the reactors at the time, or by accidentally the, the water formation is there, uh, liquid water formation that deactivates the copper, like the copper is oxidizing. Into so the another thing is like the sensitivity of the uh, poisons, low level poisons, uh, especially that presents in the syngas, comes along with the syngas like the sulfur and the HCl. So that need to be uh, removed before processing that. So these are the limitations of the present water gas ship. You know. So in order to boost that, or in order to looking for the alternative uh, water gas ship catalyst, uh, 
Um, the Pat Hansen papers, they actually published the work uh, research of an entire molecule called by the uh, catalyst. Um, they shown that the higher activity compared to the copper zinc on the standard conditions. And uh, there's some degree that the, the catalyst shown uh, sulfur tolerance uh, compared to the copper zinc on the catalyst. Um, and, uh, the Moon and the workers, they, they actually uh, published the work uh, on, on molecular carbide uh, and uh, they've shown that the molecular carbide is not stable for a longer uh, period of uh, time and it, it could deactivate uh, if, uh, by, the, by, the water, by the presence of water. So, <clears throat> and again, uh, the Nagayan workers, they have so shown that the, when you add a cobalt, uh, you can stabilize the molecular carbide to some extent, and you can increase the water ash, low temperature water ash activity uh, of the molecular carbon. So, not to do so, then I can just uh, look at the Nagi et al. Uh, co workers, they, what they did was uh, they actually <coughs> uh, put the molecular, uh, I mean, the cobalt into molecular, like a 50 50 percent, and they tested the uh, water ash activity and the conversion, as you see. The, the conversion looks uh, completely stable compared to the more pure molecular carbide, uh, and it is comparable with the commercial composite catalyst. Uh, when you have don't have uh, any cobalt in it, and the catalyst being activated is almost by 50 percent, uh, whereas in the case of cobalt added uh, catalyst is shown a uh, uh, steady activity, but there is some initial deactivation. Uh, it, it seems that the molecular carbide, uh, if you promote it with the cobalt, uh, it is showing a, a reasonable activity and it is comparable with the present catalyst. And the one advantage of this uh, molecular carbide is also a sulfur tolerance. So <coughs> we look for the, <coughs> the active phase of this uh, molecular carbide and the cobalt molecular carbide. Uh, and uh, the Nave, they propose that the cobalt molecular Carbide is stable and uh, and is stable towards the water ash activity. So the increase in activity they are proposing that likely due to the increase in the carbon deficient sites and the cobalt atoms of the cobalt molecule carbide. So <coughs> what we uh, what we actually use is we try to prepare the cobalt carbide and uh, promoting with alkali in order to increase the water ash activity of the carbide and see how that's stable under the uh, water conditions. And uh, we did an XRD analysis of both uh, fresh and spin catalyst after being cascaded uh, with the 1% oxygen helium and uh, being characterized. And we are trying to see if there is any phase changes that occurs during the, uh, during the run. And then we, we, we did this reaction in a fixed bed the bed reactor. Uh, and finally, we compared the activity stability of the catalyst. So we prepared this catalyst uh, by impregnating the alkali nitrates uh, by incipient redness impregnation and uh, having the atomic ratios in the range of 100 over to 5 uh, alkali metals. And uh, <coughs> after impregnation, we just dried it and then uh, usual uh, calcination at uh, 6 to 6 hours. Before uh, doing the run, we did a corporation uh, in situ using a CO um, at uh, 5 to 3K for uh, 52 hours. And uh, this is the typical uh, <coughs> reactor we use to, uh, for conducting the uh, run. And uh, the mixtures will be uh, passed through the uh, passed through the steam generator so that it picks up the water. Mm -hmm. Use your finger. So the <coughs> the mixture of like hydrogen, CO, and nitrogen, and the <coughs> helium mixtures will be passed through the steam in order to pick up those streams generated from the uh, uh, from the uh, from the pump, and then it has passed through the reactor. And the, <coughs> and the water will be condensed in the traps and the residual uh, 
the gas was passed through the, the GCL, we are analyzing those gas components, so CO and CO2, um, with, uh, using the GC, like the solid. So the typical catalyst loading will be like one gram of uh, the promoted uh, oxide catalyst, and in the case of uh, copper zinc aluminum, we tested uh, for a comparison purpose, we can find a gram of catalyst. I diluted the powder gas in 60 to 80 micron size. Um, and so as I said, the activation will be done in situ using uh, the CO at uh, 5 to 3K for 50 hours. And uh, <coughs> the typical conditions uh, uh, for the water gas shift that we followed is the peak gas compression, like um, it is typical for the fuel processor condition except the CO2. And of course, we did this reaction at atmospheric pressure. We vary the temperature from 453 to 573 K, that is 300 degrees Celsius. And the components being analyzed, uh, CO and CH4, CO2, uh, using the SRI uh, uh, GC. Uh, it contains both silica gel and molecular zinc column. Uh, the, the detectors will be like TCD and the FID. And then in order to boost that, uh, the CO2 direction uh, we did that so we, we have we have that mechanism to boost the direction of CO2. And <clears throat> we did an elemental analysis on uh, fresh catalyst after of course after carbonation. Uh, the carbon content of the catalyst as you see as we as we increase, as we go down from the group like from lithium to cesium the carbon content is increases. And the values in the bracket shows, like, uh, uh, it is based on the values in the bracket shows the theoretical weight percent of carbon on the basis of the cobalt carbide uh, contains the formula of CO2C. So uh, the carbon content was calculated based on this formula, and you can see the value keeps dropping as yes, because of the increasing the atomic weight of the, you know, the alkalis. So in the in the prepared catalyst, as you see, that the values are keep increasing. Uh, I mean, the carbon content is keep increasing as we go down, uh, as we move down the group. So it means that uh, the carburetion is affected by the presence of alkali, and the amount of carbon deposited. Uh, uh, I mean, the amount of carbon we are getting from the catalyst, fresh catalyst, is uh, higher than is increasing with the, you know the, from lithium to cesium. So the method that we use for uh, you know for uh, the elemental analysis, as well as the instrument we use for variant uh, ES analyzer and then CHN analyzer to uh, analyze the carbon uh, content. And the uh, fresh and used catalysts will be dissolved in a factor with nitric acid mixture, and the emission spectrum be, uh, of dissolved species were compared to those of the standard solution. Uh, the XRD analysis we did on the fresh basilaric uh, catalyst, um, and uh, as you can see that uh, we are having a dominant peak of the, uh, the presence of uh, the cobalt carbide at uh, 42 point uh, five uh, two theta, um, and uh, we have additional peaks like, uh, the, like that indicates the presence of the carbon, uh, especially the cesium and the rhenium and potassium promoted catalyst. So it means uh, you have the indication that the presence of the additional carbon that covers the cobalt carbon surface. Um, and we will see that how that affect the water gas factor. So we, we did the uh, effect of temperature on uh, the water gas shift of the various catalyst. And uh, we, we are comparing here the temperature effect on the <coughs> lithium, for example, here. The lithium shows a much lower activity even if you increase the temperature from 450 to 550. Uh, and sodium and potassium does, uh, uh, sodium and potassium exhibits higher activity compared to the other uh, promoted catalyst. Um, we are, in the next slide, I'll show that the unpromoted one. And uh, here we are comparing the effect of the alkali. And uh, so the medium and cesium again is dropping. That could be because of the uh, uh, the accumulated surface carbon uh, could uh, uh, influence this activity difference. Um, and so here we are comparing the effect of potassium loading, and as you see that uh, uh, the purple carbide here is uh, the 
I mean, the square one shows the cobalt carbide, and uh, when the potassium promoted tab is showing uh, the higher activity uh, compared to this one, the effect of loading is clearly indicates that potassium is uh, influencing the water gas activity by promoting uh, the carbide formation. And here, <coughs> I'm trying to compare the, the fresh and the used catalyst. And we, what we did was, uh, once we complete the run, and we passed the catalyst and trying to take for the exotic. And uh, what we have seen here is the phase changes as we clearly seen here. Uh, when, when we have the no uh, alkali, and you can see uh, the clear change in the phase from uh, carbide to uh, metallic character, like uh, it, it is not clearly uh, are completely metal, but it has contained some carbon as well. So, but it mostly contains the metal as well as the carbon. So, when you started with the carbon, it's going to a metallic phase under this condition. Uh, whereas in lithium, uh, sorry, sodium and potassium, uh, you you have that the phase. Uh, I mean, you have the carbon phase still after the end of the run, and uh, it. And whereas the uh, rubidium and cesium again you are losing the carbide phase and going to a uh, metallic phase. And uh, of course that metal phase is the uh, HCT phase we are getting. So far, what I observed is that the phase transition from carbide to metal was observed on all other promoted catalysts except the sodium and potassium. Means sodium and potassium retains uh, in the carbide phase under the present condition. That that could be the uh, reason why we have seen that uh, the activities are much higher compared to the other promoted catalyst. And uh, we are trying to plot the big percent of carbon uh, that in the used catalyst with the water acid rate that has been observed at uh, uh, the temperature, constant temperature. And uh, uh, that means we have the, uh, I mean, low potassium and uh, with the lithium, sodium, and potassium rubidium and cesium, when you see that uh, you have the, <coughs> you know, the typical curve that correlates the, the weight percent of carbon with the water gas rate, it means uh, a linear correlation you can see that uh, the, as we increase the weight percent of carbon, the water gas rate also increases with the, with the alkali uh, series. So sodium and potassium dominates uh, over the other alkali metals. And uh, in order to confirm further the effect of potassium in this case, what we did was uh, taken the cobalt carbide, run it, the water gas shift under certain condition, and then uh, we discontinued water gas shift and we did a hydrogen treatment. And as you see, the after the hydrogen treatment at 240 for 24 hours, the the, the water gas shift activity dropped, uh, and then and then and then it stays constant, like uh, you know. Uh, so it means whereas in the case of potassium. The activity drop and then it keeps increasing with the time. It means it could be the, because of the carbon to builds up as we as the run progresses, and it makes again the carbon phase by promote by the promotion effect of the potassium. So, so we it, it, this indirectly indicates that the cobalt carbide could be stabilized in the presence of potassium under the water gas condition that ultimately uh, increases your uh, water gas so potassium is uh, <coughs> essential for the cobalt carbide uh, for the low temperature water gas And finally, we are comparing the long term stability of the catalyst uh, with the various alkyl metals. And uh, as you see, that the water gas activity is dropped uh, for co cobalt and lithium and uh, sodium. Also, I shown some deactivation, but uh, but it's very uh, comparable with uh, you know, the potassium. Or the potassium is uh, shown a higher activity and it is quite stable for uh, close to 40 to 50 hours of run. So <coughs> potassium promoted exhibits higher and the most stable water ash activity compared to other metals. And of course, we have seen this effect on the rubidium as well as cesium, but I am not showing here. But rubidium and cesium also show a similar deactivation. And uh, we are comparing this activity of the catalyst, potassium promoted catalyst, with uh, other, uh, uh, I mean, the other paper we published. Uh, so, based on the molecular carbide catalyst, for example, uh, in the case of uh, molecular carbide, the reaction rate has been 
is 0 0.306 and it is comparable with uh, our present work like uh, potassium promoted uh, cobalt carbon catalyst. Um, so let us, if you read up, the, let us if you compare this activity with the uh, commercial standard commercial catalyst is almost uh, off of that activity. So still the potassium promoted cobalt carbon catalyst is uh, not as as a commercial catalyst, but it is. Uh, it is showing some promising activity uh, for a longer period of time. So, so with this actually, uh, I would like to I would like to just say that the future work that we are going to do on uh, on comparing the <coughs> on comparing those uh, surface compositions of those carbides with uh, along with the uh, water gas shift activity. Why? Because the water carbide, as the people who did the work, they have claiming that the cobalt oxy carbide is uh, more, more active than the regular carbide catalyst, but in this case, with just exotic, we could say that whether it is just because of the carbide is active or is it oxy carbide, but uh, we are trying to do with the XPS to measure the oxygen to carbon ratio in order to see if there is any changes with uh, the alkali. And, uh, and when I, uh, when, I, uh, when I shown this research to Gary and uh, he was telling that he has seen that uh, alkali effect uh, like uh, sodium and potassium uh, uh, on a platinum ceria catalyst, I guess platinum ceria, is it? Platinum, well, first it was platinum zirconia and Honda found that in their combinatorial. Yeah, aspects. and so he has shown that there is a trend of, uh, I mean, the sodium and potassium behaved, uh, I mean, differently than the other alkalis, and uh, the water gas shift rate was compared with the uh, uh, format decomposition. I mean, it helps decompose the format uh, much quicker than the other alkalis. So we are trying to see if that uh, if that works on this carbon canvas by doing the in-situ uh, drip um, uh, cobalt carbon and alkali promoted cobalt carbon canvas for the future work in order to see what's going on on the surface. And uh, <coughs> this, I'd like to conclude. Uh, the upper carbon is seems to be active for the water gas shift, uh, the, the low temperature water gas shift conditions. And the origin of this activation of uh, uh, deactivation of the cobalt carbon is primarily due to the phase transition from cobalt to metal to the carbide phase. Sorry, carbon to the metal phase. And sodium and potassium component exhibit this higher uh, activity compared to the other alkali component catalysts. And the results being confirmed by uh, the XRD uh, that the sodium and potassium retains the carbide phase during the water gas shift. And finally, oh, we are uh, making a comparison between the percentage of carbon content uh, in the spent catalyst with the water gas shift phase we observed. And we have seen that uh, linear correlation in the existing catalyst. And finally, I'd like to thank uh, all our group members from Clean Fuels and Chemicals Group. And, uh, and I would like to uh, thank all of the Kentucky Financial Support. And uh, thank you for all the information.